Most true is that beauty is in the eye of the gazer. My master's colorless, olive square, massive brow, broad and jetty eyebrows, deep eyes, strong features, firm, grim mouth, all energy, decision, will, were not beautiful according to rule, but they were more than beautiful to me. They were full of an interest, an influence that quite mastered me, that took my feelings from my own power and fettered them in his. I had not intended to love him. The reader knows I had wrought hard to extirpate from my soul the germs of love there detected. And now, at the first renewed view of him, they spontaneously revived, green and strong. He made me love him without looking at me. Well, tonight I excuse you. But understand that so long as my visitors stay, I expect you to appear in the drawing room every night. It is my wish. Don't neglect it. Go on. Now go. And send Sophie for Adele. Good night, my... He stopped bit his lip and abruptly left me. There was nothing to cool or banish love in these circumstances, though much to create despair, too much, you will think, reader, to engender jealousy. If a woman in my position would presume to be jealous of a woman in Miss Ingram's, but I was not jealous, or very rarely. The nature of the pain I suffered could not be explained by that word. Mrs. Ingram was a mark beneath jealousy. She was too inferior to excite the feeling. Pardon the seeming paradox, I mean what I say. She was very showy, but she was not genuine. She was a fine person, many brilliant attainments, but her mind was poor, her heart barren by nature. Nothing bloomed spontaneously on that soil, no unforced natural fruit delighted by its freshness. She was not good, she was not original. She used to repeat Sounding phrases from books, she never offered, nor had any opinion of her own. She advocated a high tone of sentiment, but she did not know the sensations of sympathy and pity. Tenderness or truth were not in her.